Hey guys, welcome back to the shed here at Money Thumper. So today we're actually going to be working on a carburetor. This is off a Safari or a Scandic 377, which is pretty much the same as a 380 engine. This one is the older model. I think she's 86. But anyways, we're going to be starting with cleaning this carburetor and hopefully getting it to stop leaking. So the problem that's going on with the sled is that she's pulling way too much fuel and she's not running right. So this sled is actually belonged to my father, and um, it's a McCooney style carburetor that he took off. He took off this off the sled earlier, and he wants me to clean it for him. So I figured I'd make a little video in case this can help anybody. These carbs are pretty simple. You can see it's leaking fuel already down off the overflow the overflow lines. But essentially, you got a little plunger. This is for where you'd hook up your plunger for your primer. You got the big main fuel that comes in. This is where the big slide would go down. This is um, the back piece. And here's the front that I'm pretty sure this side would connect to the engine. But nonetheless, so we're going to be starting the, the carb cleaning and cleaning this carburetor with it off the machine. So maybe towards the end, I'll put this back on the machine so you guys will at least see how it's taken off. Uh, my father gave me this earlier. He wants me to clean it for him. So it's already off the machine. Anyways, just going to do a quick video in case someone needs some help and how to clean a carb for one of these little 377 machines. They're really good sleds. Let's do it. Okay guys, so I'm gonna to try to show you what it does right in front of you. I'm not sure how the angle is gonna work out, but essentially you gotta break these um, screws free to get the bowl off. There is four Phillips. So make sure that you're using a good screwdriver, good Phillips that's the right size and not stripped because you're gonna to try to not want to strip these screws. Now, I already got these broke free ahead of time, so make sure you put a lot of pressure and twist them off. If any are stripped, I'd advise using a pair of like voice grips and breaking them free side on. That would certainly work. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, take off these screws. Not much to this. I'll try not to bump the camera too much. <laughs> right, so we got one basically out, another one basically out. Not much to actually cleaning these carbs. Pretty straightforward. Don't even need to strip it down all the way. You got a main float with a needle valve. You got a main jet. And you also got a pilot jet. So the pilot controls the idle. So I think it's like basically no throttle at all. Like the idle up to like a quarter throttle. And the other one is the main jet, which is like quarter to full throttle, I believe it is. It might be half, but I think it is like quarter to full, but if someone knows uh, for sure, feel free to drop it down below in the comments. I'm trying to make different videos for helping people out, but let's pull this off. Okay, so you can see we got, we got these uh, little shoot things here, the guides for the floats. It's not too, too dirty. There's a bit of gunk in there. Put it out of the way. This is one float. You can see this yellow, a little bit of yellow stuff. Interesting. I'll keep them in the same order, although I don't think it matters. Okay, guys, uh, so you can see the carburetor, it's not too dirty. And I'll pick you up in a second here. So you can see the carburetor, once you got these floats off, these guys right here, still got a bit of fuel in it, you can drain the fuel out, not a big deal, I'm going to have all this clean very soon. So you can see down here, this is the float, little float lever arm. This is your main jet, and this is your little pilot jet that's going to be down here, it might be a little bit hard to see on the camera. Uh, a word of advice as well, I've cleaned one of these stall carbs before. Keep in mind that these are like brass, I think it is. It's a real soft metal, this gold stuff. So it can break easily, so when you're putting it back together, don't over tighten it. Because uh, uh, last time I cleaned one of these carbs, I actually snapped the main jet in half. Totally my fault, so just word of, word of advice, don't over tighten these. But anyways, I'm going to go get my, uh, I got a little spring loaded punch. Works excellent for taking out these little um, little pins. I'll show you guys, so we'll grab it. So this main pin right here, I got one of these jobbies. Pretty cool, it's a um, automatic punch. So as long as you push down on it, you activate the spring, you can punch it out. So I just gotta make sure what side's the bigger side. 
Okay, so it's kind of like a nail. We got a bigger head right here. So all you think, I'm gonna take my center punch and just watch, it should pop out pretty easily. Okay, so you can see the little uh, screw head right here, it's slowly coming out. I'm gonna tip it upside down. So I'm gonna get an actual small skinny punch now and just push it through. So once you got that little pin out, you can literally lift that, um, that little arm off, this little piece off, then on the side. And you can see down here, there's a little clip and that clip actually holds in the needle valve. So I'm just gonna take something small and just knock this clip off. See, it's a little tiny clip. Now we tip it upside down, that needle valve should come right out. So that is our needle valve right there. This is what stops the fuel. All right, so let's continue taking this off. I'm gonna to have to get some small sockets. You can see that this is a hex piece right here that comes off. It has a little uh, sealing gasket underneath it and a plate, and it should be another gasket underneath. And we gotta take off this guy. So let's go ahead and take this one out as well since we're on the, um, we're on the needle valve still. So just stick this back in the vise. I'm not gonna put it on tight, of course, because that is aluminum housing and I don't wanna break that. So I just wanna show you a little trick for actually getting out that emulsion tube is to take the main jet, screw it in a tiny bit, and I take the back end of a hat or back end of a screwdriver. So you see how the screwdriver's soft, you just hit the main jet, and you can see that the emulsion tube starts to slide down. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue pushing out that emulsion tube. You don't wanna put too much force on it and mess up the treads, but I'm gonna get that tube out of the way here now. So as you guys just seen, I knocked the emulsion tube loose took a screwdriver and literally lightly tapped down. And as you can see, watch the motion tube right there. So next is just the little pilot jet that's in right there. You, can really, you probably can't see it on the camera. And then we're back to cleaning. So as fast as that guys, we almost got the carburetor stripped down. This one in here, I don't know if you might not be able to see it because how dark it is, it's actually a flat top. So I'm going to try to get it out without stripping it. Sometimes these are in overly tight, which is sad, and they strip. All right. This one's not stripped. Thankfully. <laughs> I don't have very many screwdrivers, so it comes down to this one little screwdriver, hopefully doing the job. But you almost need one slightly bigger than this screwdriver, so it's a bit sketchy doing the, the pilot jet. springs okay so just the pilot jet as you can see here's a little pilot jet a little flat top little tiny orifice for the idle all right guys so that is pretty much everything that i'm going to disassemble i'm not going to touch the, the idle screw and i'm not going to touch the, the air fuel mixture screw i think this one right yeah okay so this one right here is actually the idle screw and we know that for a specific reason you see that stud so that means basically you turn this clockwise, you push the stud in further, the throttle slide moves up further, you get a higher idle. So that means that the other one is the air fuel mixture screw right here. But I'm not even going to take that one out because it's not really too important to take out for cleaning purposes. But yeah, I'm just going to spray this all down now with some carb cleaner. Let's go find my carb cleaner. I think it's on the shelf. Okay, so essentially I'm going to soak everything down, all these orifices here and uh, in here and all this stuff. So we're gonna give everything a little soak. And what I does afterwards, like this is not a really high end cleaning. I'm gonna soak this all as best as I can overall. You guys don't need to watch all that. I'm just gonna take my time and soak it up and um, 
fill this up with carb cleaner too. And usually I'll throw actually the parts, like the, the jets and stuff, right in the bowl. I'm getting low on food, am I? Yeah, I am. But anyways, at the very end, we're also going to clean it up with the compressor and blow air to it. So we won't have to worry. So give me a few minutes. I'm going to clean everything up and then I'll be back with you guys shortly. So as you can see, guys, I have my little uh, parts bowl, which is everything, all the jets and stuff is in here. I'm going to let all this stuff soak for 20 minutes or so, or maybe a little bit longer just with this stuff. And then that big compressor that's down here, we're going to fill that up with air and blow all this stuff out and then put it back together. This stuff is like a, almost like a plastic rubber material, so I'm not going to spray that. That's not really important. I'll just give it a little wipe over. But yeah, we'll blow all these orifices out, all these different spots, make sure there's no gunk in there. We'll blow all this stuff out, and then we'll be in business. Good good shape to put it back together. All right, guys, so that's been soaking for a while, so I got the compressor ready to go. I got one of these jobbies. Blow high-pressure air to all these orifices. And then I'm going to take this stuff out and do it individually. So you guys can watch it if you want. But all we're going to do is just clean out all the holes. That's all. I don't have a like ultrasonic cleaner, which is like really high end and nice to have. But the compressor is going to do the job. Okay guys, so we're going to be putting this plate back on first, so don't forget that a ceiling washer goes on the bottom side, just like that, once I can fit it back in there, this goes back over top, like that, we have a ceiling washer right here, so we'll just put that on, oh, sorry, I'm wiggling you guys around, <laughs> try, not to, try not to move the camera too much. But that's basically it. So we got a ceiling washer on the bottom. We got the washer on top of the plate. That's just to keep the, the fuel where we want the fuel going and not going anywhere else. So this was the nine millimeter. So let's go grab that. Nice easy crab job. Nine millimeter. Now, don't overdo it on the tightness. Just snug everything up. Not going any tighter than that. <laughs> I don't like these brass fittings, but they're a soft metal. That's the needle jet, or needle float, float valve, I should call it. I don't know why I'm calling it needle jet, it's float valve. Now I gotta get the, the little ceiling, um, or a little locking arrangement back under. Hopefully this is not too tricky, let's see. Come on, you can go. Okay guys, so you can see right here, I got the clip back on. It's just so, um, you can see it just pushes on. I just um, took a little screwdriver, just helped guide the bottom piece on. You can see it locks right there. And I took a little set of pliers and just give it a tiny squeeze. But all it does is make sure that it doesn't fall out essentially, right? You can see the little float jet, or needle, float needle. I keep calling it a float jet. <laughs> Don't mind me, it's just lady in the evening. But yeah, essentially that's it for that part. Done nice and tight. So now I'm gonna take the old motion tube. Remember that long guy? Stick it right down through here. So we gotta go back down through. The only thing is, you can see that dot right there that has to correspond with this piece right here. So, there's that cool spot. All right, so I gotta try to get it down there. Now this can be a bit tricky, but it will go after a few tries. So you can see, you gotta guide it on through. Okay guys, so a couple more things we can do here. Let's go ahead and put that little pot of jet in. I don't know why you guys keep moving around. <laughs> so the pot of jet just goes straight on in. Take this out of the way, get the pot of jet down in there. Got the little flat top screwdriver. So put that back in and snug it up is all we gotta do with the pilot jet and just don't over tighten it because if, if you over tighten it it becomes extremely hard to take out in the future. Okay so I can see look this bottom and out already. So I'm not going to force it beyond that because that'll just strip it. So um, this is the little arm for the float. 
still a bit of residue on it, but it is clean. It's just a carb cleaner that's still on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on, make sure there's no bigger side, or sure bigger side. The other side looks bigger. So let's put it back in. Okay, so that's basically in there. Okay, so I went ahead and just put the screws back on, put these hoses back on. I think that this were, these were already were, but it's not a big deal. They're only overflow hoses anyways. So that's it, it's quick, dirty, clean. Nothing else really to it. Just pretty much put this back on the sled. This isn't um, like a professional quality clean, it's just give it a jets of clean, clean out the bowl a bit, make sure there's nothing bad in it that caused it, um, cause it to pull um, gas. My, my sus main suspicion was uh, the float or the needle, float needle or float valve. I was mainly thinking that that was getting stuck, so that's my main concern. But um, we'll throw this on the sled and I'll update you guys when she's on the sled and we'll hear if she runs. So I could have done a better job on the clean, but hopefully this can help someone anyways. So if you want your carb to be spotless, maybe take a couple hours and actually clean it properly scrub it with a brush anything you want to do but for me as long as this is functional and she's gonna run so i really care for all right guys well thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed the little video